device, the most popular Ruby on Rails authentication gem. If you are a Ruby on Rails developer, most likely you have used it. And actually, in one of the annual Ruby on Rails surveys, it was rated both the most liked and the most hated Ruby gem. Now, there are lots of threads about like, uh, uh, is device good? Should you use device or not? Should you, can you use device correctly with Rails 7? And I think all the criticism for device uh, mostly boils down to a couple of things. First of all, it feels too much like magic. So you just run the gem, run the uh, installation, and you have authentication working in your application without actually adding a lot of code into your app. So you don't have to dive deep into how the authentication uh, uh, registrations uh, work. It just works. So too much magic. And the second is that it can be a bit hard to extend device out of the default uh, flows. So for example, if you want to add two-factor authentication, then you need to override the default uh, device uh, controllers quite uh, a lot. And it feels a bit hacky. Now, there are different other alternative approaches to authentication. There are lots of Ruby gems. There are external services like Auth0. Actually, in one of my applications, that I inherited, uh, they were using the uh, old zero for authentication instead of a uh, Ruby gem, and it was a big pain to maintain it and to just make it work good enough for Rails. I don't recommend uh, using external uh, authentication if you have so many wonderful Ruby gems. Now, Rails 8 ships uh, with its own uh, authentication generator that I have covered in a couple of previous videos, but unfortunately, uh, the authentication generator is not. Uh, good enough for production yet, in my opinion. So uh, there is still a lot that needs to be added. For this moment, uh, you can just uh, sign in as an uh, existing uh, user by default. You don't even have registrations. And well, that's what my second video was about, adding registrations to the authentication generator. You would also want to add confirmations. Uh, you would want to add uh, uh, the possibility to change uh, uh, the email, for example, uh, you would want to add the default tests for the authentication and it's still all lacking from the default uh, Rails 8 authentication generator. So it has all been developed and maybe someday it will be a very good solution. But until, uh, yeah, and it is supposed to cover a lot of things that the device uh, doesn't cover. So with this, you generate all the authentication logic into your application. So you see all the files, you can change the authentication inside your application. You get all the authentication related files. Uh, so it will not feel like magic and you can override anything you want. But again, it is uh, still uh, some way to go to have uh, the whole authentication logic inside this uh, authentication generator. And for now, I think the best alternative to this authentication generator might be authentication zero by Lazaro Nixon. So the cool thing about this gem is that uh, it is basically everything this Rails authentication generator wants to be in a mature state. So with it, you would be able to generate uh, all the authentication uh, routes, views, controllers, models. And uh, again, it is not like magic because you see all the files, all the connections between them inside your application. You can edit them. And uh, the cool thing is that it has, the gem has a lot of different options uh, out of the box. So you can add two-factor authentication with just adding dash dash two-factor and you don't have to find a hacky way to integrate it into like device. You can add uh, uh, even mul basic multi-tenancy, basic uh, functionality to log in as another user. I think that's uh, really cool. Uh, suitable, so like uh, you have to enter a password to view a protected page. So uh, let's have a look how uh, we can use authentication zero in a new Ruby Rails application. Now here I have uh, a new uh, Ruby Rails application and I'm going to try to install this gem authentication zero. So uh, running the generator. Now let's uh, run Rails generate authentication. And you see it generates a lot of files in uh, my uh, Ruby app. Let's have a look at them in Git. I think it's a comfortable way to look at what has been added to our app. So uh, first of all, in the application control, we have this method to set uh, current uh, user, current session. Uh, 
I like starting to look at it from the migrations. So let's have a look at the migrations. A user has an email and a password, and by default, a user email is not verified. And a user has many sessions. So uh, a user can be logged in the, in the same uh, uh, device from two different browsers, and this would be two different sessions. And you'd be able to log out of one of the sessions uh, uh, from another one. So you can like remotely log out from another device. This is really cool. And Rails 8 authentication ge generator also has this feature. Now let's have a look at the routes. So we get the routes for logging in, for signing up, for changing the password, uh, for viewing uh, where you are logged in and logging out remotely, uh, for resetting the password, for verifying your email, and you also get a basic home page. Let's have a look. So we have a home page where we can see the uh, basic uh, code for like signing in, signing out, and seeing what user you are signed in with. Uh, then again, user. We use has secure password. You see how the tokens are generated for email verification, for password resets. Uh, again, the user has many sessions, validations. So uh, this is everything you wanted. You don't magically extract uh, or outsource your authentication logic to device. You have everything in your app. And again, it is now your burden to uh, make sure that this logic uh, is not broken by your further actions. Okay. Let's uh, run RailsDB migrate and run the application. Okay, let's open localhost. And you see on the new application, it gives me the sign in page because uh, I have to be signed in to use the app. Let me sign up who at bar.com. Okay, at least 12 characters. Sign up, you see I'm signed in. Uh, I can uh, go to the console and you see whenever I was signed, uh, uh, I created an account, I get an uh, email to verify my account. So by default, my account is not verified. You can see it in the uh, migration or in the schema. I have this user verified false by default. Let's open it in the console, Rails console, user.count.first, you see. Verified false. Now, uh, by default, uh, users that did not confirm their email can access the application, but it is uh, for you, the developer, to potentially limit uh, unverified email access to your application. You could do it as uh, in device, either um, straight away, not allow unverified users to access the system, or after some period of time after the user account has been created. Okay, so let's uh, try to open the link below and uh, verify our user. I will open it in a new tab. Okay, thank you for verifying your email address. I will go to the console, user first, you see verified true. Okay, I am sent in as a user. I can uh, change my password. I can uh, change my email. And here's the school tab, devices and sessions. I'm quite sure that the Rails authentication generator down the road is also going to add something like uh, this uh, page. So uh, I can click log out and log out from the device remotely. Let me try it with a new browser tab, localhost. Okay, signed in. And now I'm going to try to sign out of this one uh, remotely. You see, now I refresh. I'm signed in from two different... Uh, uh, browsers. I will click log out here. Now I refresh here and you see I'm uh, logged out. So it is wonderful. You see I managed to remotely log out. Okay. Uh, so this is the like basic, basic authentication logic and you can extend it uh, with the different plugins. So there are these plugins for like uh, uh, enabling two-factor authentication, uh, tracking activities, and yeah, and then we'll also maybe try multi-tenancy. So uh, let's save our changes. Uh, add authentication zero. I will also add a link to the gem. Okay, and now the cool thing and good way to learn uh, 
how the generator works with and without all these plugins is trying to add them one by one and uh, see the difference in the code generated. For example, I'm going to rerun this generator with the two factor. Let me run Rails generate authentication two factor. Okay, uh, I get a conflict. I will say false. And uh, you see, uh, here is the diff between the initial generation and the generation if I run it together with two factor. So you see the sessions creation controller is somewhat different. We get all these uh, controllers for uh, two factor. Uh, then a user has uh, many recovery codes and uh, the views have also been updated and the migrations are also somewhat different. And you see we have the roots for two-factor authentication. You see quite a lot of roots because, well, there are quite a lot of views involved with two-factor authentication. Let's run Rails to be drop, to be create, to be migrate. Okay, let's run the Rails server and see how could this uh, two-factor authentication work. So let me sign up. Okay. Okay, now I have this uh, tab to factor authentication. You see, I click on it and I get this whole guide to add to, thank to factor authentication. I can scan uh, this code with my camera and uh, well, the thing will work. So you see, out of the box, you have two factor authentication. Now, again, uh, running the correct generation uh, of all the uh, plugins is best to do, I think, when you're just creating a new application. Uh, this way you will have uh, all the lo logic that you need for your application out of the box. Uh, let's try something else. So uh, I'm not going to save these uh, changes. I'm going to try to add, for example, multi-tenancy. I will again run Rails to be drop to be create to be create. I will run Rails generate uh, authentication and I will say tenantable and false. Okay, let's uh, run the migrations and let's see the difference. So you see we have an account, so users belong to an account. Uh, we have a concern. We have uh, current account and a user belongs to account. So uh, you see with this uh, authentication zero approach to multi-tenancy, uh, one user with one email by default belongs to one uh, account or organization or team. And if you wanted to implement uh, the possibility for one user to belong to multiple accounts, you would need to still do it uh, manually, but this is a very good uh, start. Now, uh, in many cases for multi-tenancy, really it is enough for just users with one email to belong to one organization. I have worked in uh, some organizations and it was just fine, but if you're building uh, an app uh, like Slack or like uh, Discord where one user can be a member of multiple organizations, then you would need to add an additional layer, user uh, has many accounts through membership. But uh, for many cases, this is just uh, enough. So in the schema, we have uh, a table of accounts and users belong to accounts. Let's uh, have a look at this account middleware. So it is a way to, uh, I think, find the current uh, account uh, based on the ID in the roots, I think. Okay. Well, I uh, showed you uh, what the gem is, how it generates different files. Uh, I invite you yourself to run each of these generators on top of the default generator as I did. So like I added authentication zero base basic without any plugins. And on top of it, you can try all the plugins, see what code it uh, each of these plugins generates. It, uh, a good way for you to learn how to create all these features. Uh, Lazaro did some really good work with this. 
And uh, yeah, one thing you should definitely keep in mind if you are importing all the authentication logic into your app, but not uh, just uh, outsourcing this work to an external library as device. It is your responsibility to manage this code now. Uh, it is not the libraries. It is not like there's no more device that is in the background authenticating all the users. You own the code inside your application and you can override it. And uh, sometimes uh, overriding the default path can lead to errors. So be mindful when uh, rolling out your own authentication and uh, making changes to the defaults because you can break something unintentionally. Uh, finally, I don't know whether I mentioned it. Uh, uh, it uh, the gem imports uh, default tests uh, for the generators. So uh, you have working tests for your authentication flow, and this should make uh, the possibility of errors lower. Anyway, I invite you to try out Authentication Zero. It is uh, what Rails. 8 authentication wants to be in an ideal state. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.